you know, I was a little bit sick the past week, so if I do stop occasionally for a bit of a cough, I apologise. No problem. That's we, fine. we always have a we always have a bit of a, a cough break. <clears throat> Don't worry about that. Uh, <laughs> oh, the cord. Hi everyone. We're just gonna give it a few more minutes for people to settle in, uh, get your sound up and ready, and then we can start soon. So just hang in there. If you guys have any other questions, aside from the ones that you have submitted during registration, you guys can use the chat function to send your questions in. I'm also joined today with my, by my colleague, uh, Ms. Yen Chen, that I'm sure you've met before in the past. So yeah. um, it's great to have her here and she's a, a wealth of knowledge. So she'll be able to help me in answering any questions that you guys might have. Great. Hi, Yen. how are you? Hi, I'm good. So good working from you. home now, <laughs> most of the yeah, time. Yeah. I can see all your important work behind you. Um, yeah, yeah I, 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 bur I burned all the paper. Yeah. It's all, online. all those confidential documents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just through the bits in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> uh, to Sophia, I know you guys don't have to turn on your videos if you don't want to. Uh, you guys can just uh turn off your video and just listen in. Uh, unless you guys want to turn on the videos at the end to ask your questions, that'll be fine as well. Excellent. And so I think, ready? Mr. Marshall, we should be able to stop. Fantastic. Okay, well, hello, everyone. We're, we're really lucky to have um, Mai Coop here from the University of Queensland in Australia. As you know, because you've all signed up, this is a law lecture. Uh, but primarily, this is focused really on the industry going forward. Uh, obviously, we're, we're in a period of quite a lot of upheaval and disruption because of the COVID. Fargo, and obviously, as, as I've said in other things, that's changed quite a lot of the way uh, work is being done. And indeed, you know, some of the changes that are being made will probably stick around for a little bit longer than, than we might have originally imagined. So I'm going to hand over to Mai now, and she's going to tell you all about it. Thanks a lot. Excellent. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks so much for joining us uh, this evening. So as mentioned, my name is Mai and I'm from the University of Queensland's Faculty of Business Economics and Law. So I'm the Regional Manager for Southeast Asia and I work closely with our UQ School of Law. I'm not a law academic, but I do work very closely with them and um, have been able to gain some really great insights into our law program, um, some exciting things they've been doing with our program in order to equip our students, our graduates for the changing world, you know, what's happening in industry. Um, so much change is happening, as you, I'm sure, are very well aware of. So how can we prepare our law students and graduates for the unknown? So um, I can see you've all kindly taken time out of your day to join us. So um, I'm assuming that means you have an interest in potentially pursuing a career in law, a field that, that as I mentioned is incredibly versatile and it does actually have a lot of applications in more fields than you've probably thought of before. So today what I thought we could do is we'll um, obviously cover a bit of information about the University of Queensland's law program including um, what's so special about it, um, the value, valuable experiences that we've built into the degree, our scholarships, entry requirements, but we'll also discuss um, skills are useful for that particular field of study, as well as, as I mentioned, where a law can possibly take you following graduation. So I hope you'll find this session to be, <clears throat> excuse me, useful. Um, and if you have any questions at all, um, please feel free to type them into the chat box. I'm joined today by my colleague, Ms. Yen Chan, who is also here to assist with answering any questions. So if we don't answer it during the seminar, then we'd be more than happy to come back to them at the very end. <clears throat> okay, so before I get into it, um, can I just check, does everyone, has everyone heard about UQ? A show of 
little thumbs up on the on your computer. Has anyone heard about UQ? No. Yes, I see one. Priyasha. Excellent. Has anyone been to Queensland before? Sonia's heard of us as well. Australia. Anyone been here before? Okay, so for those who don't know, we're located in Brisbane. So it's the third largest city in Australia. Um, we're the capital of Queensland, also known as the Sunshine State. We're on the East Coast. Um, I'm not sure if you can see my, my cursor here, but we are here on the, um, on the, the Eastern Coast. So um, we are lo located uh, very, very close to the city centre. Um, we do have around 300 days of sunshine per year. So it's quite warm, very tropical climate, which I'm sure all of you will be very uh, used to living there in, in Malaysia. Okay, so Brisbane, um, it is the Australia's fastest growing capital city. And we've actually been incredibly lucky um, in this current situation with how um, we've managed the, the pandemic so far, knock on wood. So, Luckily, um, our, our government uh, did approach the, the management of the spread of the, the, the virus quite quickly and quite strongly. So thankfully, we've been able to start returning to, to normal life um, at the moment and our students are starting to come back onto campus, thankfully. Um, but one of the other great things about Brisbane itself is it is known to have a lower cost of living compared to a lot of, a lot of other major cities in Australia. So um, that does help in terms of budget. I know Australia is a little bit more expensive than Malaysia, um, but there are lots of other ways for you to be able to save your, your money um, while still having your, your high quality experience studying in Australia. And these are just some images that I like to share of, of life in Brisbane, because I know many, many people haven't really heard about Brisbane or know what it's like. Um, a lot of people know Sydney and, and Melbourne, but um, Brisbane is also a really big, exciting city, lots of fun things to do, um, some amazing beaches, some of the best beaches in the world, the gateway to the world famous eight universities in Australia. It's been garnering quite a lot of international media attention of late due to its work on the all important COVID-19 uh, vaccine. And likewise, our schools of business, economics and law also have a very strong ranking, uh, national and international reputation, not only in terms of their international rankings, but also in terms of the engagement with industry, our research output, as well as our outstanding graduate outcomes. And our approach to law and legal education has been recognized as very innovative. Uh, we've been pioneering teaching and research in, in areas of law, science and technology. And this has been particularly important given the challenges and opportunities our world is being faced with at the moment, not only in terms of the current pandemic, but with a fourth industrial revolution our, or digital disruption that has touched all of us in one way or another and will impact the way that we do business and how we live our lives forever. So our, our Dean of Law, Professor Patrick Parkinson, uh, he wanted to ensure that technology and its implications are embedded across our curriculum. So, for example, when students study fundamental subjects of law, topics will include the way technology is having an impact within. Another example, when we approach core subjects like contracts and torts, we deal with the latest technology and coding in that and the economic impact of that. In international law, you're talking about the law of war and constraints on the use of drones, constraints on robots in the law of war, and what's, what's ethical warfare and what's not. 
So through electives and co-curricular programs, our students can go into more depth, but still look at issues through the lens of technological change. And I might just share a quick little video with you. Um, I'll see if I can um, switch the screens here. Just a moment. And hopefully you'll be able to hear. It's amazing how much the law is changing, which makes the future so exciting. Far beyond dusty, leather-bound case books, today's lawyers need to be tech-savvy, original and creative. They need to collaborate, adapt and invent, which is why I chose a combined program with a law school that's focused on the future, where I'm taught to think for myself, where I can be involved in pro bono work, where the dedicated teachers prepare my classmates and I for tomorrow's legal challenges, like legal practice in an age of artificial intelligence, or regulating advances in science without breaking the accelerating pace of invention, like the challenges of a changing global legal landscape, or the implications of defending data in a world where everything is shared. It's this future-focused curriculum that will help me secure my future. The University of Queensland, own the unknown. Click the link to discover more. Okay, hopefully you were able to, to hear that. Um, can you see my screen now, the, um, the slides? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is our undergraduate program, our Bachelor of Laws, Honours. So it is four years in duration. Uh, it does have two intakes per year, so both February and July. Okay, and students benefit from a strong co-curricular program that includes real-world experience in legal profession, in the legal profession, I should say, um, holistic events to help you stay healthy, engaged and motivated, as well as the opportunity to participate in national and international mooting competitions, which I'll mention a little bit later. So you'll gain an understanding of the concepts, the principles, policies and values of the law, both in Australia and in other jurisdictions. And it strives to develop outstanding skills in critical, rational and analytical thinking. And I'll teach you to craft clear and persuasive arguments. So those are skills that will be really valuable in whatever career path that you choose to, to follow in the future. So I'll discuss things like entry requirements a little bit later. I won't spend too much time on that. However, um, unlike any other law schools, we've focused on keeping our class sizes really small. We've packed them small um, so that our students can get more meaningful and personalised ex uh, experience throughout their studies and a stronger level of engagement with your teachers. Uh, our staff, they bring a wealth of practical expertise, along with qualifications from leading institutions across the world. Um, and our program also meets the, uh, sorry, <clears throat> the academic requirements for admission as a legal practitioner in Australia. And it's also recognized in countries like Singapore, India, and Malaysia. Um, countries from which we've historically welcomed quite a lot of students into our law programs. Okay, so what does our program look like? Um, like many other law degrees across the world, there's going to be some compulsory law courses that you have to complete in order for your qualification to be recognised and for you to be able to go ahead and practise um, in, the, in the legal profession. However, in our program, um, like I said, it's a four year program, but what that means is you get the opportunity to not only complete your, your compulsory law courses, but you do have the opportunity to complete some non-law course, non-law electives, I should say. So that's the chance for you to do some courses in other areas, which perhaps you have an interest in, but don't potentially want to do a whole degree in. But it's also really great for you to gain complementary knowledge that's going to really help strengthen your your knowledge and skill set for the legal profession. 
Um, for example, you might want to do some psychology courses or some business courses or commerce or economics, which will go really strongly um, with your law, your law qualification and, and can really help you depending on what career path you choose to take once you graduate. And I'll mention those potential career paths afterwards. You also do get the chance to choose a number of law related electives and I've included a few of the examples on the screen. So there's things like family law or medical law, environmental law, Islamic law, copyright law, um, introduction to taxation law. So lots and lots and lots of different opportunities for you to, to delve into specific areas that you may have an interest in. Um, potentially you would like to specialize in that particular area once you graduate. So a really great opportunity for you to, to deepen your knowledge in particular fields. We also have some double degree options or dual degree options that you can choose to, um, to undertake. So what is a dual degree? Uh, essentially it's two bachelor's degrees, specific bachelor's degrees that have been combined together. So it enables you to complete two bachelor's degrees in a shorter period of time. So for example, if you did a Bachelor of Arts with Bachelor of Laws, you do get the chance to finish that um, within five years. Okay, so instead of doing a four year law degree and a three year bachelor degree, you can complete the two bachelor's degrees within five. So that's really great. Not only in order to gain two separate sets of knowledge or two bachelor's degrees, you're basically broadening your skill set which you can then take to prospective employers or whether you want to start your own business. It's, it's really great to have a broad range of knowledge in multiple areas which combine together synergistically to really give you a great opportunity to succeed in the future. Okay. So I'm just reading some of the questions here. Okay, I'll get to those questions at, uh, at the end. Hopefully I'll be able to practice them, I mean, practice to uh, address them throughout some of these slides. Okay. All right, so something a lot of people ask us about, um, not only with our law programs, but um, all of our programs in general, but particularly when it comes to our law degrees, what can I do what, what opportunities do I get presented with in terms of industry engagement and practical learning? And, you know, this is a very important question. We have quite a, a, a large range of opportunities that we have developed over the years for our students to really take advantage of industry engagement opportunities while you're still a student. So we have things like our law mentoring program, where we connect our undergraduate law students with alumni and members of the legal profession. So that gives you the chance to gain some really great insights into the realities of law and the legal practice to broaden your professional network. So you have people that you can speak to and gain insights from at any time throughout your, your career. Um, we also have a, a UQ pro bono center so that is, <coughs> excuse me, the Pro, Bo Pro Bono Centre, it provides opportunities for students to use their legal training to gain practical experience while they're still studying. And you're going to be supervised by um, a legal practitioner. The, the centre partners with private law firms, with barristers, with community legal centres and non-government organisations. So by applying your classroom learning to real life situations, you'll be able to make some important contributions to unmet legal needs in the community all before you graduate. So that's some really great experience that you can be putting on your resume before you even graduate. We also have our mooting program. So for those of you who might not be, you know, very familiar with mooting, mooting competitions are basically mock legal hearings in which legal or factual arguments are presented in a hypothetical case before a judge. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's before a judge, a tribunal member, or an arbitrator. So while you study with us, you can participate in a wide range of mooting competitions to help you 
develop your legal knowledge, your research and communication skills. And these competitions are both internal within the university as well as external against other universities all around the world. And they cover issues ranging from commercial disputes to human rights claims. So you'd be coached by academic staff and alumni and UQ's MOOC teams have achieved tremendous success in local, national and international mooting competitions year after year. So for example, last year, UQ triumphed at the International Maritime Law Arbitration Moot Competition, winning it for the second consecutive year and the sixth time overall. And we also won the title at our first appearance in the Deakin International Commercial Arbitration Moot. And the previous year, our team was crowned world champions 2018 Philip Jessup, Philip C. Jessup International Law Moot Court Competition in Washington, D.C. in the U.S., um, winning over an impressive 600 other competing teams. And this is actually the third time UQ has won this prestigious international mooting competition, which is the world's oldest and largest international moot competition. So there's also lots of other um, opportunities for you to gain some industry engagement and practical learning opportunities. I won't go through them all. Um, we also have that practical, uh, practitioner and residence program, um, but there, there's quite a lot for you to get involved in throughout your entire degree at UQ. And this is just a, a little snapshot. I just grabbed a couple of examples of some of the amazing things our students have been up to lately, it's certainly not an exhaustive um, list of the achievements of our students, but um, yeah, we're quite, we're quite proud of our students. They're not only just attending their classes and completing their degree, but they're taking advantage of a lot of the opportunities that we've, that we've had on offer for students to do things in addition to their studies, to gain extra um, experience getting out there, starting to build their, their professional network. So um, we're really quite proud of all of the, the things they've been able to achieve so far. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, another big question that comes up um, is, you know, what kind of career can I get with a law degree? Is it just a solicitor? Do I just, you know, become a judge? You know, there's a lot of different things that you can be doing with a law degree. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, there's lots of different ways that you can take your, your legal um, qualification. Um, recently, I attended a, um, an online seminar, which was basically um, run by UQ Ventures, um, which is the entrepreneurship arm of the university. And they had um, representatives from the, UQ, from the Australian space industry and also from um, the Israel space industry. It was quite interesting. And they were talking about what kind of, um, what kind of people they'll be needing in the future. You know, the space industry is not that big at the moment in Australia, but it's certainly growing. The Australian government's pouring quite a lot of money into developing the, the space industry. Um, and they basically said a lot of the professions that you need on earth, they're going to need in the future when we, we start reaching out into space and, and Mars and, and who, who knows what else from the future. So one thing they specifically mentioned was legal professionals. They're going to need legal professionals engaging in the space industry. So they've been looking at um, interesting things like um, insurance, um, who's responsible for um, you know, certain scenarios, if things go wrong, who is to blame and how do you approach these certain situations? So uh, legal professionals was one of the things that came up time and time again about, you know, these are the kinds of people that will need to move the industry forward. So it's, it's quite interesting. So um, certainly a lot of people um, after studying law, they move into further training as barristers or solicitors, public prosecutors, community lawyers or government, <clears throat> excuse me, but certainly that's not the limit, okay? A lot of law graduates work in various sectors of state and federal government. They can work as legal officers within the government departments or they may be involved in developing or administering government policy. 
They might also embark on a career in the diplomatic and foreign service. Um, the corporate world, that's a really big area where a lot of our law graduates end up in. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so many law graduates work as in-house lawyers for large companies where they undertake work in a wide variety of areas such as corporate governance, insurance, um, environmental compliance and, env and employment law. So using their law program often combined with areas like business management, commerce or economics. Many graduates can undertake careers in the business world in areas like investment, banking, insurance, property development and management. Others pursue careers in consulting or in advisory services industries, working to provide solutions for quite a wide range of clients. Um, and another example is um, community support and social development. So graduates can use their law program combined with any other program really to work for industry associations, to lobby and uh, industry associations, lobby and environmental groups, social service groups, think tanks, community service organizations, legal aid and community legal centers. So, <coughs> excuse me. So our law school um, recently participated in a survey um, of our law graduates, um, those who graduated from our degree back in 2016. So we do have to usually wait a few years to, to survey a lot of these graduates to see um, the success of the, the, sorry, the graduate success of our students because as you may know, after you've graduated from your law degree, you usually have to undertake some kind of practical legal training and then you, you start entering the, the workforce. So we did wait a couple of years in order to see where our graduates have ended up. So um, what they've found from this particular survey of the 300 students that graduated in 2016, um, about 81% of them um, we were able to identify and 82% were employed in roles that required a law degree, such as solicitors, judges, associates, government lawyers in court or tribunal roles, or in the community legal sector. Another 13% were employed in graduate, graduate roles in the business management consultancy or government sector roles where a law degree is considered to be quite useful, but not necessary. Um, and also in businesses like the big four. So you've got your Deloitte's, KPMG, PwC, McKinsey, and in government policy roles. An additional 4% were divided equally between other legal roles such as paralegals, clerks, researchers, or barristers assistants, and graduates undertaking further full-time study after their bachelor's degree. And finally, 1% of our respondents were undertaking entrepreneurial pursuits, such as online retailing and, and um, starting their own businesses. So this just goes to show the value of a UQ law degree or a law degree in general. And despite the large number of law graduates being produced by universities across Australia, the great majority of our graduates have gone on to, to practice law or find employment in other work where a law degree is useful. So um, something really good to keep in mind, you know, this is why we undertake study is to, to really focus on um, work, getting closer to your, your career aspirations. Okay, so professional recognition, this is a big one. Our degree is certainly recognized here in Australia and to qualify for admission to the legal profession in our country, um, you must satisfy both the academic requirements, which is the degree, as well as practical legal training. Excuse me. <clears throat> so if you intend to seek admission to practice in Australia, you need to undertake approved practical legal training via a coursework practical legal training program. <clears throat> or legal training under the supervision of an Australian lawyer. So you can find a little bit more information about this whole process through the Queensland Law Society website. It's quite detailed. I'd really recommend that you have a closer look at that whole process 
as for those who want to look at pursuing a legal um, a legal career in Australia, but of course, it really comes down to where you wish to practice law. So if, for example, you want to return to Malaysia and you would like to practice there, you'll need to undertake similar legal, uh, practical legal training when you return back to Malaysia. Um, if you want to go and practice in um, Ethiopia, for example, then you'll need to check with the, the local um, the local authority there to see if they recognize your qualification. So that's good practice, regardless of where you wish to study. You need to check what are the requirements for that particular country and whether your degree will be recognized. But we know that our law, our law qualification is recognized here in Australia, Singapore, Malaysia and India. So it's always good to, to double check these things to make sure that you're on the right track. <clears throat> okay, so I mentioned a little bit earlier that we do like to focus on, you know, looking after our students. It's not just about your studies. Um, we recognise that the profession can be um, quite, uh, quite a stressful uh, career path. There is a lot of work involved when you're studying law. There is a, a, um, quite, a lot of, um, quite a lot to do. And we want to make sure that um, our students have a healthy work-life balance and we do have um, specific programs in place to make sure they do maintain this balance and it's all about setting up this balance while you're still a student and ideally we'd love you to see you guys carry this practice into your your career as well so we have things like free counseling we have a buddy program we have mindfulness yoga lots of special events as so so we really want to focus on your overall experience and not just, you know, study, study, study. It's all about a balance. You need to look after yourself while you're studying too. Okay, so another exciting thing about studying something like law at UQ is our international award-winning Bell Career Services team. So aside from your actual degree, we do have... Um, this wonderful team where you know it's not just about developing your knowledge in your chosen field through your degree but we can teach you how to compete and help you strengthen your portable skills through a comprehensive range of employability programs and initiatives on offer through this team so just an example you see here things like our student work experience program we have um, even things like the community engagement program where you work with other students on a, a project for a real life um, community organization. So once again, great opportunity to get work experience on your resume, as well as get that nice warm and fuzzy feeling knowing that you've helped those in need. So in 2018 alone, our, our career service team ran over 120 employability workshops and industry networking events and over a thousand employers participated in our program so that includes things like our student work experience opportunities so as you can see uh, there's plenty available completely free of charge even up to six months after you graduate so um, it's really it's really good practice to to participate in a lot of these things and be as proactive as possible while you're still a student and you'll be able to reap the rewards of that once, you're, once you've graduated and you're ready to, to step foot into the corporate world. <coughs> so we do have a few different scholarship opportunities available as well. Um, there's a couple that are to be confirmed, so I won't mention them all right now, um, but do keep in touch with us um, and we'll be able to let you know once a few of the additional scholarships are confirmed. I have put a scholarship link down the bottom as well. Um, so you can take a photo of that if you like. Um, but one of the, the main ones that it is confirmed um, is our TC Burns School of Law Undergraduate Coursework Scholarship. So this is open to all, all high achieving students. We have one that is, uh, covers 50% of your tuition fees. And we have one that covers 25% of your tuition fees. So 
it's for your tuition fees. It doesn't co cover things like your living expenses, your travel expenses, overseas student health cover, um, or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. Um, in order to be eligible, you first need to apply for the Bachelor of Laws program. And then once you've submitted an application, then you can go ahead and apply for this particular scholarship. Okay, so a big portion of this decision is based on academic achievements. So work really hard while you're still in school and um, the higher the grades that you have, the better your chances are of being considered for, for the scholarships. We also have a range of other Global Leaders scholarships available. There's the Malaysia Global Leaders Scholarship, Singapore Global Leaders, Global Leaders Scholarship, lots of different ones. It really depends on your nationality. So I recommend jumping onto our scholarships website. All of them are listed there and you can take a look and see which ones are applicable to you. And do keep checking that because as I mentioned, we are waiting for confirmation for a few more. So um, make sure you bookmark that website. Okay, I won't spend too much time on the entry requirements, but this is just to give you a little bit of an idea of what we're looking at for our entry requirements. So for our law degree, we are looking at an A-level score of 14. And what does that mean? What is a 14? We basically take your best three A-level subjects or a com combination of your A or and AS subjects where an A star or an A is equal to five, B is four, C is three, D is two, E is one. So you take your top three A-level subjects, combine that score, and that will give you the, the cutoff that we have for our particular degrees. Um, keeping in mind there is a mathematics requirement for our degrees, except for law, we don't have a maths requirement for law. Um, we also do have English language requirements um, for our programs. Um, but you should be able to cover that off with your studies in your A-levels. <clears throat> Alternatively, we will look at IELTS as well. Okay, so tuition fees, um, we are looking at about 43,888 Australian dollars per year. So that's um, for the, the whole year. We just pay semester by semester. So half that amount is your semester fee. Um, and we do have further information about our tuition fees on our website. And lastly, before I get to your questions, um, as I mentioned earlier as well, it's not just about your studies. We do have quite a vibrant campus life um, at UQ. Um, I was walking around campus today. It's the week before exams and there's quite a lot happening. We've got live music, we've got food trucks, I know tomorrow we've got um, puppies on campus, um, uh, things like um, Zumba, work, uh, Zumba classes and lots of other fun activities. So we really wanna make sure that you have a good time. You make lots of friends. There's a lot of clubs and societies to join. So you might wanna join the UQ Law Student Society. Um, but you also might want to join the UQ Chocolate Appreciation Society or the Harry Potter Club. So lots of opportunities there to also make friends, um, as well as uh, a lot of Olympic standard sporting and fitness facilities. So um, it's all about that balance, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, so I'll get to some of your questions here. <clears throat> Okay, so question one, what are the additional requirements to be certified by the professional body of the respective careers, for example, law, engineering, in order to practice in Malaysia? Okay, so I'll just turn that off. So you do need to, um, <coughs> if you, your goal is to practice in Malaysia, I'll just see if I can find this link for you. Hi there, I'll come in on that one. Yeah. If taken. Yeah, you need to pass yep. the Malaysian bar if you want to practice in Malaysia if it's law. You would need to take the, the Malaysian Bar Association exam, okay? Um, for engineering, it will be, be slightly different, depends on which form of engineering you're going into. 
but for law it'll be just to take the Malaysian bar exam in the most in the main part. There will be jobs within the broader Malaysian legal profession you can go into. If you particularly want to be a criminal lawyer or something like that, then you would need to take the Malaysian bar exam. Okay. And, and just adding to that, I understand once you've completed your law degree, you do need to complete the certificate in legal practice, so the CLP. Um, so that is something you'll need to also factor in if you're looking into a career in law in Malaysia. Hopefully that's answered that question. Um, if not, please let me know and I'll, I'll get back onto that. Um, question two, what is your favourite thing about your university or campus? <clears throat> right, well, I actually did my undergraduate and my postgraduate studies here at UQ, so I can give you that perspective from both student and staff. It's a very beautiful campus. So um, some people say it's like, it feels like walking through Hogwarts. Um, it's one of the most photographed campuses in Australia. <clears throat> So um, it's, a, it's a very beautiful place to study. I'm um, usually around exam period, all these beautiful purple jacaranda trees flower. So usually when you see those flowers blooming, you know it's exam period. So um, there's so many students every day we see outside um, taking photos around, around campus, particularly around those beautiful jacaranda trees. So I think that the, um, Number one, the, the environment, it's really a beautiful campus to study at. Also my teachers. I, um, I had some amazing teachers who, who really inspired me, um, who really fundamentally changed the way I looked at everything. So that was something I didn't quite expect. Um, I was hoping for it, but, and I was, you know, pleasantly surprised by how inspiring my teachers were. Um, they opened my eyes to new things that I didn't think I would love, but, um, or I didn't even think of in the first place. So, um, what I would say, regardless of where in the world you choose to study, whether it's UQ or anywhere else, um, I'd say chat to your teachers because they've got some really great experience, um, and insights that they can share with you and they can, you know, potentially give you some, um, ideas or um, insights that, you know, may open your mind to exciting possibilities that you may have never thought of before. So that was one of the other things that I really loved about UQ. Okay, we've got another question here. <coughs> Excuse me. I, sorry, I keep coughing. I'm slowly getting over my cold. <coughs> um, what are the key academic areas of development in law? Are certain types of lawyers becoming less needed because of technology? All right, that's something I probably am not the best to answer given I'm not a law academic, but what I have, but what I can answer is um, basically coming back to that point I mentioned a little bit earlier, we've seen that, you know, the fourth industrial revolution is happening right now, pandemic or no pandemic. Um, technology, as you've correctly identified, you know, it, it is something that is really infiltrating how we live our lives and it's changed a lot of industries. Um, even things like the amount of data that all organizations in regardless of industry are consuming and things like cybersecurity and so it's really technology has fundamentally impacted everything that we do. So the way that we've tried to address that is not necessarily moving away from things like law. It's how can we, you know, this skill set is certainly still going to be needed regardless of what happens in technology. It's about how we prepare for the world and how it's changed with technology. So um, rather than just focusing on traditional law, we've looked at building in your knowledge and exposure to science and technology in the program. So even if you don't choose to study at UQ, I'd really recommend that you choose a degree. Um, that's going to give you that opportunity to learn other industries because um, there's a lot of different um, challenges and opportunities that you're going to face when you graduate things that we can't really predict because, you know, the, the rate of innovation and change is happening so quickly. We can't predict what the world's going to look like by the time you graduate. So it's really important that you're armed with not only the fundamentals of law, but that critical thinking and an understanding of how science and technology and innovation work. So you are 
that's prepared for whatever the world has ready and waiting for you when you do graduate. So sorry, it's probably not the in-depth academic answer that, that you might have been looking for, but I hope that at least answers a little bit of your question. Okay, so um, are there any recommended A-level subjects for law? I hear that history is considered useful. Um, <coughs> so given it is an undergraduate degree, we're not assuming you to have specific knowledge in particular areas other than um, your English. So that's the only subject prerequisite that we have. But I guess what you could, the one way you could look at it is um, if you do have an idea of the kind of law that you would like to get into. So if, for example, you're looking at commercial law or copyright law, you might want to look at something business related or economics. Um, if you're interested in science and technology, um, then you might want to do a science related um, subject in A-levels. Um, so yeah, in terms of, I guess they're two separate questions for entry into the law degree. It's just English that we're looking at, but um, but that other than that, don't really have any specifics that we require you to have. Um, I guess it will just be thinking about what kind of career or what subjects do you enjoy? Because, you know, in the future, it's, it's, it's best if you choose something that you have an interest in and you enjoy. And, and certainly law is a a field that you can take into any industry or field that you like. So perhaps you can think about it in that way. All right, is there any other questions that I can help with? Hopefully uh, my answers have been um, somewhat useful. <laughs> and you know, if there's any other questions that you have, um, I hopefully you can see my contact details here please feel free to email me at any time. Um, if I don't have the answer, what I can do is get in touch with our, our law school and put you in touch with one, one of our academics there. And they'll be able to give you some really great in-depth answers to any of your questions. So um, I hope that's of use. Um, is there any other questions at all that I can help with? No. All right, well, and parents, uh, if anyone has questions, feel free to just unmute and ask if you don't want to type it in the chat. <coughs> but I think that should be it. They're also quiet. That sounds like everything to me, Jazza. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, as you can see, um, from Ms. Jazza's emails, that there are others um, for other subject areas um, later coming up later in the week. If you're interested in any other subject areas, please do join those as well. All right, thank you everybody. If you want to leave the Zoom session now, um, and if you, if you have any questions, you can always email me as well. Thank you so much, everyone.